Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm here at Charlotte Motor Speedway for a very special event. It's called the Shelby GT500 Track Tour. Now, in this video, we're not gonna talk about the GT500, but stay tuned for that one. What we are gonna talk about is two separate Mustangs. I have a 2020 Shelby GT350. This is that Heritage Edition, very similar to my very own GT350R Heritage Edition, but I wanna talk about what's going on with 2020 and the GT350 and also compare it to the car that is replacing it, the 2021 Mach 1. Now remember, the GT350, been around since 1965, the classic colors, Wimbledon white, with the Garzman blue racing stripes. Here's a little fun fact. This is actually the first time that Ford has ever officially painted those colors on the car because that would normally take place at Shelby American, which back in 1965 was in California. Now, fast forward to the 21st century, we know that the GT350 has that voodoo engine, that flat plane crankshaft, 8,250 RPM, 526 horsepower, and of course, that slick shifting Tremec six-speed manual. Now, the fun news is the car that's replacing it, the 2021 Mach 1, it is the Mach 1 back again after so many years, over a decade since the Mach 1 has been around. Now, what's interesting about the Mach 1, you can get it with that same six-speed Tremec six-speed manual transmission, but you also can get it with the 10-speed automatic, which you've never been able to get on the Shelby GT350. GT350 first made its appearance officially in 2015, and this is the swan song the last year. So let's go ahead, let's find out and see how does really a GT350 compare to the new Mach 1. Right off the bat, the Wimbledon white blue racing stripes. One of my favorite parts about the GT350 is the front of the vehicle. It has a totally unique front fascia and hood and side fenders that's totally different than the GT500 or any other Mustang product. Now, older style headlights, which I personally love. These first appeared in 2015 and now they're still going strong on the GT350. Remember in 2018, there was a refresh on the Mustang GT and they changed those headlights, which you'll see on the Mach 1. The Mach 1 has that updated headlight design. As we come to the center grill area, just really, really nice. Everything is flat black. Everything is fully functional. And then of course, in 2019, Ford made some changes to bring the standard GT350, which this is the standard one, a little bit closer to GT350R spec. Now what you're gonna have is, is that redesigned area to open up and bring in air to the grill, both top and bottom. And because this is not a GT350R, this is your standard front splitter. Now, if you look at my review of my own GT350R, you would know and notice that the front splitter extends a lot further. This really can be used as a track car, but obviously a little bit more road friendly. Now, when we get up onto that hood, one off, hood for the GT350, so much different from the Mach 1, so much different from the GT500. But what I love about it is that you have that functional heat extractor and the way that they kind of just dropped it down. Instead of having a raised hood, it's actually recessed and it gives it such a sharp look. Now, as we come around the bend for 2019, you had these updated wheels on your standard GT350. Now on the R, you still get those great carbon fiber wheels, but these aluminum wheels, I love the way they redesigned it. Gloss black instead of the flat black. 19 inch wheel, of course. You're gonna get those same six piston Brembo calipers. And of course, that rotor two piece ventilated 15 inches in diameter. Gonna give you great braking capability. Now, when we go over to the Mach 1, some people are calling that car a parts bin special because there's actually parts from the GT350 that are on that Mach 1. But I'm gonna point out some differences that I'm gonna say that the Mach 1 is gonna have a unique personality. Now underneath the sheet metal, you are gonna get that Magna Ride suspension specifically tuned for the Shelby GT350 and it came standard and it still comes standard. If you buy a 2020 GT350, you get that Magna Ride suspension. Now going on to the fender, like I said, totally unique fender that's gonna help drag that air out from underneath the hood and channel it down the side. You have that classic Garzman Blue GT350 badge. And then as we work our way back, the body lines of this vehicle are the same as your standard Mustang. And that's the great news is, is that there's really a Mustang for everybody. And that's what I like to see 
whether we're looking at the Shelby, whether we're looking at the Mach 1 or the GT500. Now, as we get to the back, of course, tires are gonna be a little bit wider than they are up front. Now, the reason why they do that is to quicken up the steering. We wanna get traction down, so you're gonna have 305s up front. A lot fatter than the tires that are up front. And then what's nice about these tires is that they're the Michelin Cup 2s. So that's something new that started in 2019. You get that stickier track day tire rather than your non-cup two, which would be your Pilot Super Sport tire. But love the design of the wheel. You can still see the nice large rotor back here and those four piston Brembos. And then to wrap it off out back, when you're talking GT350, this is the refreshed rear spoiler. So in 2019, some of the other tweaks, this is something unique, 2019, 2020, has that great flow. You can get an additional gurney flap. So you, if you get the handling package, you actually have a gurney flap that bolts to the back of the wing to give you even more downforce. And remember, the reason why they call it the gurney flap or the gurney strip is because of Dan Gurney, who believe it or not, won the 24 Hours Le Mans with AJ Foyt in 1967. Wrapping up out back, you bring the stripes all the way down. Of course, you're gonna have that active exhaust and even the rear diffuser unique to the GT350, does not look like the Mach 1. You're gonna get all the coolers, your diff cooler, engine oil cooler. But why don't we go ahead, we did a walk around of the GT350, sad news, this is it, it's going bye bye, but let's see what's replacing it with the Mach 1. All right guys, here we are with the 2021 Mach 1. This is not the first time we're seeing it. Remember, we brought this to you first at the Ford Nationals in Pennsylvania, but I wanted to show that connection with the outgoing GT350, Another vehicle that's being replaced in the Mustang Corral with this Mach 1 is the Performance Pack Level 2. No more Performance Pack Level 2. And to be honest with you, there really shouldn't have been a reason because that needed the coolers that this has. Now, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get some unique styling. It's been 17 years since a Mach 1 has been seen. And I know a lot of people are upset. They're arm wrestling, they're tongue wrestling about where's the hood scoop. But you know what? You're still gonna get the most track-focused Mustang Coyote platform. Coyote platform, remember, Shelby GT350 is voodoo platform, but this has the Coyote 5 liter V8. We're talking about 480 horsepower out of that 5 liter, but I think the biggest news is that you get to have it your way just like Burger King. If you want, you could have that slick shifting six-speed Tremec taken right from the GT350, or this particular one has that 10 speed automatic transmission. But let's go ahead, let's see what makes it unique. And you could call the shots, put it in the comment section. Would you go Shelby GT350? Or are you going with this Mach 1? Up front, you're gonna get those updated headlights. So like I said, 2018, they refreshed the headlight design. That's something different from the 2020 GT350. Front fascia is unique. Look at these nice dark metallic. So a lot of times you'll see flat black or gloss black. I like the way they went with this flat metallic gray color fully functional, you're gonna get those extra coolers. Engine oil, you're getting a transmission cooler and a diff cooler. Now the transmission cooler is because this has that 10 speed automatic, but you're also getting a diff cooler. So if you had a GT performance pack level two, and say you did three laps and your diff overheated, this isn't gonna happen. And that's why the Shelby GT350 was such a better track weapon because of those coolers. But this is all unique. I love the way they took the splitter and kind of brought it to the side. And you can see how they did the aerodynamic work it's not like they just stuck it on with some bubble gum and tape. They actually thought this through and this is gonna give us extra downforce. Now, when we come across the grill, I love the gloss black finish, of course, fully functional. And I'm even digging the flat metallic gray pony in the center. I'm glad they didn't just do gloss black. It would have got lost, but very, very unique grill. Even the lower portion, instead of it being black, gloss black, it's gonna be that flat metallic gray. And you could see how that front splitter extends out. Different from a performance pack level one, different from a performance pack level two, and definitely different from a Shelby GT350. That one thing we are missing is that raised section for that hood scoop, but we'll zonk it, but they're not bringing it. So I guess we gotta move on. Moving on to the hood, I do like the classic Mach 1 stripe. Goes all the way towards the windshield, flat black, little bit of gloss black. Look at the way they did the Mach 1 script. Spot on the money with the white. Super smooth, especially with this Velocity Blue. Velocity Blue is growing on me, and I really feel that when you add stripes, it kind of brings down the intensity of the color. Alone, it, it may be a little bright, but boy, oh boy, adding some stripes, adding some different color really brings it up. Now, like I was telling you, 
different hoods. The GT350 had that unique hood. This one, you have your dual heat extractors. This is the same hood off a of Mustang EcoBoost, off a of Mustang GT. So nothing really to write home about, but they are functional and you do get the stripe. Coming around the bend, you can see how that arrow work wraps into that front, face, and that front fascia. And then look what we have. Wheel and tire setup a little bit different. So it's a 19 inch wheel still, but you're looking at a different design. You got your flat metallic gray, machined aluminum. To be honest with you, this is a wheel off the Bullet Mustang. It's just painted differently. What's crazy though is being that flat metallic gray, it looks a lot better than the Bullet Mustang wheel, which I didn't hate the Bullet Mustang wheel, but this one really is working with the Velocity Blue. You're also gonna be running Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. So if your Mustang is gonna see more, tr more road duty than track duty, these tires are still gonna give you phenomenal grip, but they're gonna give you a little bit better durability, a little bit better wear than the Cup 2 tires. Those tend to wear a little fast, especially if you have a heavy lead foot and you like on throttle fun like I do, but you're gonna get those massive six piston calipers, just like before. Rotors are not the same. So rotors are a little bit smaller than the GT350, but underneath the sheet metal, you are getting the Magnaride suspension and you are getting that same GT350 intake which is gonna bump up the horsepower to 480 horsepower, same amount of horsepower as the Bullet Mustang. Now coming down the side, Mach 1 badge, looking really clean. I really think it's so smart that the way they took the stripe, just high enough, side stripe all the way down with the black, with the white. Side sill is exactly the same as a Mustang GT or a Mustang EcoBoost or even the Shelby GT350. Keep working our way back. Now when we get to the rear, we're looking at 275. So you do have that wider wheel and tire in the back, but you're not looking as wide of a tire as say the Shelby GT350. So something to think about. Also, you'll notice we don't have Brembo calipers up here. You have your standard sliding caliper in the rear and a really, really small um, rear rotor, but you are gonna get the 373 gears just like the GT350. And the bigger news, like I said, if you like to go to the track, you get a diff cooler, a differential cooler, which is gonna help keep those temps down. Wrapping out to the rear, if you like a little smaller spoiler, they went with, once again, flat gray on the, on the trunk lid spoiler, really clean look. You got your Mach 1 badge with that flat metallic gray. And then here's really where they finish it off. You're gonna get that quad tip exhaust, very similar in shape and size of the GT500 and a very unique looking rear diffuser with that diff cooler behind there. So you be the judge, you be the jury, you tell me, is this a parts bin special? I think having that 10 speed is really gonna open up the doors when it comes to people who want that extra performance out of their Mustang product. But it was nice to be able to say goodbye to the GT350 and welcome back the Mach 1, but lots of exciting things happening with Ford and Ford Performance. If these are the types of things that you wanna see on Ready's Rise, these comparisons, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Ready's Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content like we are right now, click the link in the description. Get yourself some on throttle Ready's Rise merch. Gotta give it up to my lovely, beautiful, intelligent, hardworking, when I say hardworking, she puts in the time and the hard work. Lori, working at camera like a champ. Show her some love in the comments because without her, this would not be possible. So thank you, sweetheart. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.